All right. Thank you. Or Molly. Hello. All right. Let's get started with Keith Pompey. What's up, Doc? What's up, Keith? Uh, I'm good. Hey, Doc, I just want to get your impressions of this victory. I mean, you didn't have Joel. Seth had a great game. Ben had a triple-double. Tobias had a great game. Just give me your... It was, a, it was a really a great team win, uh, Keith, and I, I just love how they played. We got down early, no panic set in. Um, I really believe, Keith, we, they believed that they were better today, you know, like they were the better team. I, I, I thought they, they played with that type of confidence. Um, I tell you, for one day of, of, you know, really changing, like going small, um, you know, install our little spread stuff that we were running. Um, for us to execute that well, um, it just tells you how focused they were. I mean, we didn't have a lot of time to work on a lot of stuff, uh, but but they did it. And so, really, I'm just really proud of all of them. Ben was Ben was incredible. Um, Tobias was incredible. Seth, you know, what can you say? So, uh, but everyone else was good. Tyrese came in. Ferg gave us a big lift. So, there were so many guys. I thought Dwight. Howard in the second half was huge. So it, it was what you would call a all-hands-in team win for sure. They talk about Ben was incredible. He had uh, – they, they tried to do the hack of Ben. The first time he split on the second time, he hit both of them, and they went away from it. So, I mean, he, he showed some poise out there. Yeah, he did. You know, I, I keep saying it. Let's stick with him. He's a hell of a player. Just stick with him. He's just – he's a hell of a player, but he's also human. He's going to have some great games. Far more great games and more bad and, and less bad, and that's that's who he is. But he just does so much for the team. He, he really does. Um, I mean, we kept him out there because uh, Scotty decided that they wasn't taking Bradley Bill out, uh, and you know we had to give Matisse a rest, and then we put Ben on him. Uh, we anticipated they were going to rest Bill, and they didn't. So Ben had to stay out there, and you know Ben was dying out there. They all were, but but they they hung in there. All right, no. rest, uh, thanks. Marcus Hayes. Hey, Doc, in, uh, in the pregame with uh, with Tommy, you mentioned that, yeah, you were without Joel Embiid, but this was a tremendous opportunity as opposed to, you know, a, 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 an all-alarm fire. Um, who do you think made the most of that opportunity, and um, how would you rate you and your coaches, your coaching staff's response to, to, you know, sort of having to change your chemistry right away? Yeah, you know, we already had it, Marcus, as far as chemistry, so I don't know if I rate the coaching staff at all. I wouldn't anyway, if you know that. Um, but I thought our job was to make sure everybody was in the right place, like make sure we spaced right. If we were going to go small, uh, we had a no-paint rule. Like in transition, uh, we said the, the, the paint, uh, as far as running without the ball, was an electric fence. You had to run behind the three. Uh, we had to keep the floor open. I thought our guys did that uh, all night. I don't know who took advantage of the extra minutes. I think they all did because we we, we kind of passed them around. So I just think, again, it was just a really good team win for us. Thank you. John Clark. Doc, uh, defensively, um, especially heating it up in the second quarter, just how impressed were you with the way they played defense together? You know, John, my concern going small um, was transition uh, because we had no rim protection. And in the second half, they had zero transition points. You know, um, I think they had eight points in the paint. You know, that just tells you how locked in everybody was, you know. And, and you know, we talked about the obstacles and all that stuff. And, you know, I think one of the guys said, without, if you don't have an obstacle and you reach your goal, it probably wasn't a great goal. So, I think our guys decided this is one of the obstacles we had to get through tonight. They did it. Uh, but defensively, that's what we're going to hang our hat on every night. Uh, and I thought we did a great job of it tonight. And Seth said after the game that Ben told him while they were playing video games that I need 30 from you. Um, how impressive were just everybody raising their expectations and maybe with each other without Joel there? That's, that, that was the talk in the locker room. Each guy was challenging each other. Um, now I know who can coach Seth. Uh, you know, uh, clearly Seth listens to Ben, so we're going to use Ben as a translator for Seth from this point forward. Because if that's all it took, we're going to keep doing it. But Seth was awesome. Um, I thought him and Tobias kind of had that two-man game going. Uh, we gave them the freedom to figure it out, uh, and I thought they did that. Thank you. 
Thank you. Hi, Carlin. Hey, Coach. Um, Sheik was out here just uh, putting up shots after the game. I know it was kind of a tough series for him. Uh, what do you kind of what, what do you think was the reason for him to really have a tough series just overall against Washington? Well, he didn't play a lot of minutes. Number one, uh, you know, right now there's guys in front of him. You know, and so it's tough to get on the floor. Uh, and he's pressing a little bit, uh, but I still believe in him. Uh, Shake is going to help us win uh, several games uh, on this journey. I can guarantee you that. And then also uh, Tobias had, I think he had six assists tonight. So uh, was, was that kind of like a, did you want him to be able to kind of move the ball a little bit more? Is that something you talked to? Yeah, we, we, we I, listen, the, the, the last game, the whole team, we dribbled, we, we looked like the Gold Trotters. We, we dribbled the life out of the game. Uh, that's not who we've been all year. We showed film about all, you know, today to our guys. Like, we will never win playing that way. Um, if, if a guy is near past it, and I thought Tobias was phenomenal in that tonight. Thanks, Coach. Ben Simmons is available at the secondary link. And over to Dan Murphy. No, you guys need to go talk to Ben. You don't need to talk to me anymore. <laughs> hey, Doc, I got one for you. Uh, um, you put... Uh, you seem pretty fired up on the bench all game. Um, you seem pretty pretty fired up in that. Uh, I'm sure it's been an emotional 24 hours for you. Um, but I was wondering, as, I mean, as a coach, do situa situations like this kind of give you a new kind of different kind of energy? Uh, not that not that you want not that you want it to happen. But I mean, you got to coach Maxi up. You got to get a team to believe in itself. You got to change your expectations. Um, what's it like from your perspective? Yeah, it's, it's what you just said, David. It is. It, it, def it definitely. You know, you get thrown this different challenge. You know, as a coach, you got to try to respond. You get, you got to try to give your team with what you have the best opportunity of winning. Number one, uh, put them in the position and then get them to believe. And that was in order what we believe. You know, uh, I, I tell you, trying to figure out who to start tonight, uh, it was unbelievable how many times we switched lineups in the last ten hours. I mean, we we were all over the place, and um, you know, I thought as a staff. We did a hell of a job settling and, 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 and going with it. So um, that was good. Good for everybody. Thanks. Paul Hudrick. Hey, Doc. Uh, just, I guess, to follow up on that a little bit, uh, was Tyrese under consideration uh, to start tonight? And um, no. just with him, no, he was not. Okay. No. Uh, and just uh, with him, is it a matter of he's just a guy who's kind of made for these moments, or is it maybe he's just – so young and he just doesn't even know what he's like into right now. No, I think he's a hell of a player and I think he has found himself. Um, he, he, he figures out now how to play, uh, how we need him to play, what makes him, not only him a good player, but making everybody good on the floor when he's on the floor. Um, and I tell you what, the most, I think everybody would love his offense. Where I'm prideful, he was our worst defender. Uh, and it wasn't close. The numbers said that, too. Um, in the last month, he, he has turned the corner defensively. He made so many little plays defensively, rebounds, uh, digs, getting steals. So for me, I mean, obviously the offensive energy was there, the speed was there. But watching him grow defensively for this team has been absolutely amazing. Thanks, All right, last question, Tom Moore. Yeah, Doc, I was just, uh, I was actually going to ask you about the two-man game with Seth and, uh, with Seth and uh, Tobias, but uh, uh, we'll go to plan B. Danny, I thought Danny Green with a steal and the layup in the backcourt and then the other, you're forcing the turnover. I thought he really gave you a lot of energy when you were making that run. He, he did, and, and you know, it's funny, Tom, my, you know, one of my coaches was like, let's get Matisse in for Danny. And I, if you watch, I actually had Matisse walking towards me and I changed my mind. Uh, that's just luck. You know, it really is sometimes. Danny gets a steal, then Danny makes a three, and I was looking at our coach was laughing like, thank God we didn't make that, that the substitution. So, uh, you know what I love about Danny, and this is why he's so important for this team. Danny was struggling in the first quarter. I mean, he missed wide open shots, turned the ball over. Uh, and, but he doesn't, nothing shakes him, man. He just keeps coming. So, um, you know, he's a great guy to have on this young team.